Bumble's public debut is expected in just a moment, pricing at $43 last night with ind latest indications there at $73. Bumble founder and CEO Whitney Wolf Hurd joins us now. Whitney, congratulations. As 31 years old, you're the youngest woman to take a company public in an IPO. Uh, my question for you first is what's next for Bumble? Bumble, well, we are so honored and excited about this opportunity. And we are really so excited about getting back to work and growing into our big future vision of really connecting people across all verticals of love and friendship and business and going international and taking our mission to different corners of, of the earth and really helping put the power into women's hands when they connect. And we're so excited and humbled to be in this, in this uh, seat right now. And Whitney, as you look at your business model, um, you know, big number of users and growing fast, but just a small percentage of them are paying subscribers. How important is it to Bumble and Badoo, your other apps future, to get more people to pay on a monthly basis? Yes, this is high priority. We are very committed to, you know, reinvesting in future monetization features and product offerings to convert a higher penetration of our customers to becoming paying users. We'll do this through a bevy of subscription services, higher tier, and other um, adjacent opportunities. Good morning, it's John Fort. Uh, I want to mention the indications now are uh, 75. Uh, dollars a share. We'll, we'll see where this opens. I want to ask about Badoo because I, I believe you said that it was in the latest quarter that you reported 39 percent of revenue uh, is from this app that isn't as women led. But of course, that that core uh, Bumble app is growing much faster. What is the future of Badoo? Do you expect it to decline? Are you transitioning people over into more of a Bumble experience? What should investors expect to see from that legacy app? Yeah, no, it's listen, it's a great technology platform. And there is a very loyal customer base in a lot of international markets for Badoo. And what we're really focused on is really reinfusing our mission of an accountable, kind digital ecosystem and leveraging their incredible legacy technology, which has been an innovator and pioneer in this digital space. They were one of the first to market with video dating a year prior to the pandemic. And so really taking that technology and putting a new emphasis on the brand and, and really making sure that we merge under this one you know, umbrella brand of Bumble Inc., which really encourages a kindness, accountability, and, uh, you know, making the first move more broadly. But for Bumble, we'll stay committed to women making the first move. And, and tell us about that both brand and cultural journey that um, Bumble has been through. Because a year and a half ago, very different story uh, when, when uh, Andre Andreev, you know, w was still in the picture here. And there are all these questions about the culture that he had built around that company that, in effect, owned Bumble at the time, um, you said that you hadn't experienced the kind of misogyny that some people were alleging that he brought to his corporate culture. But how have you built beyond that? And what did you learn from that experience? Yeah, so today, Bumble is all about looking forward. And we are committed to our customers, but we're also very committed to our team. We have merged under one consolidated uh, internal team, and we are all here for diversity, inclusion, equality, and breaking down barriers that have, you know, historically existed in the tech landscape. And we're very grateful to, you know, the, the technology and the team that came before us. But we are looking forward and we're really excited about building an inclusive, uh, not only user base and technology platform, but a, a, a culture where all of our team members can thrive. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.